Let's discuss the absolute refractory period and the relative refractory period. These are two concepts that, that um, challenge a lot of my physiology students. So here's your action potential. You have the graded potential that starts at negative 70, goes up to threshold potential at negative 55. And once those voltage gated sodium channels open, this whole period of, of them opening going up to positive 30, and then at positive 30, you have the uh, potassium channels that open. Potassium's flooding out of the cells, so you see the, the steep decline. During that whole time period, from when the voltage-gated sodium channels open until it reaches negative 70 millivolts again, that's absolute refractory period. No matter what frequency that stimulus is coming in, it can't uh, initiate an action potential. And now that the molecular basis of this is known, it's pretty fascinating. On a molecular level, the sodium channels have this ball and chain where the ball physically blocks the ion channel and doesn't allow sodium to go in. From negative 70 all the way to negative 90 millivolts, potassium's still leaving the cell. And action potential, if it's a really strong stimulus, can overcome the potassium leaving the cell and get another stimulus going. So that would be the refract refractory uh, period from here to here from negative 70 to negative 70 again, it, you know, after it goes down to that negative 90 point. So that's the refractor, re relative refractory period. This is the absolute refractory period. The, our brain interprets a really strong stimulus by the frequency of action potentials. So if you step on attack, that's going to have a lot of action potentials. The frequency is going to be really strong. It's probably going to overcome this relative refractory period, and your brain's going to um, interpret that stimulus and respond to it quickly because it knows it's something that's severe.